What's good? This is Ted Lope. We with Jim Bone across the street. We on the northeast side today. Well, thanks Ted for showing up. Um, I brought you a gift. Um, I noticed that you wear the bucket hats from time to time. I know that's your favorite color, I hope with. Uh, right. Then I brought you another little gift too. Uh, I noticed you brought your own smoke, but. Oh, oh shit, you know, I don't discriminate. I don't oh, send down no smoke. I got a, this is about as high as you can get at the store. There was 33%. They're Ooh. like $8 a J or $8 mm. a blunt. So I got one for you, one for me. And I figured we could go for a little walk and talk. And I'm with that. So here we are at Jeff. Go to Jeff. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, Jeff, man. man. We on the commercial side, but yeah, man, Jeff, Kirby side. Yeah, yeah. Right I would like to ask you though, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the Mandela brothers. Okay. Um, these are some guys that I've been following their movement for quite a while around mm -hmm. town here. And you had a very intricate part uh, in a lot of their beginnings. And I don't know if you directly know that or not, but um, their well, early videos all came from you. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, Cuddy Matthews that we're talking about, right? Right, right. Yeah, that was my uh, that was my handle as a uh, as a video man. When I met them. They was going by um, traffic and left lane. Yeah. So uh, Bo, Bo was left lane. Uh huh. And then um, his brother was going by traffic. Oh, the motherfuckers covered up my stoop. They, uh, them guys was both younger than me. Hey, you can get it like this. You got the school up in the back. Yeah, yeah. Them guys was both younger than me. Uh, like you said, he, they was like 12, 13. I was in high school. And so uh, the spot that I'll show you here soon, this, uh, this spot I'm about to show you, man, the, the sad where we, we recorded at, it was like everybody go, and it was guys who helped me too. But uh, them guys, you know, they was younger. And um, you know, like they said, man, we, all of us, we was in high school and shit. You know what I'm saying? So and they were like in middle school and grade in, school. Yeah, they was in middle school, man. Young dudes. And um, I think with me, the difference was that uh, I just gave them a little more. Um, Cause at the time, I was still getting my shit together too, as far as my flow. Mm -hmm. But I just gave them, you know, saying that attention like that. Yeah, man. I, I see you. You know what I'm saying? I, I love the energy and um, and all of that stuff. So. You know, as I was learning, they was younger and they looked up to me and then I was showing them how to do things. And um, by the time I remember I had moved to Atlanta, I went to college in Atlanta. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people know that about me. But uh, where'd you go to school in Atlanta? Clark Atlanta University. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Educated man. And so, uh, you know, when I did that and I came back, every time I come back, Swiggle would be like performing or have something going on. And then uh, him and my sister, they was rocking. It's your sister, uh, Sharonda, right? Yep, Rose City Miss Chief. Rose City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I met her a couple years back now when she did an event for uh, for the community at the Elks Hall uh, yep. not long yep. ago. Yep. I got to think of people dropping people on this show. Look, that's one of my rap homies right now. We're going to call him back, yeah. though. Yeah, man, to, to make a long story short, I'll come back and they'll be doing their thing. And then when I moved back, um, you know, yeah, I, I did their videos, but it was kind of, I look at it as kind of like, <clears throat> they helped me help them. Because when I came back and I was uh, pushing my film, they was the ones that tapped in with me. Right on, right like on, that car. Right on the side of the road here. Man. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they helped me by, you know what I'm saying? Because they, you know, they paid me for them videos too, you know, but. It gave me a chance to work on my film and be relevant. And then, you know, I was, and I enjoyed it because I love what they do. Um, you know, every time I came through, it's cracking ass show, cracking ass party. And they had that motherfucker lit. And then, um, you know, I took a little hiatus for some years having kids. And then when I came back, when I came back, shit, Swiggle, he, he always called me big bro but shit he was putting me up on shows and shit you know like he said he put a lot of artists on shows shit he had me sh on shows out here in southeast uh northeast um shit i think the last one i did with him we had went up to seattle 
And uh, that was we got wrong. And that was a dope one. Um, and one thing about Swiggle, man, you know, he he just, he always stayed down. Like no matter what everybody else around him was doing, he just stayed across this way. You know, but yeah, he yeah Swiggle though, man, he always showed love, man, and that's you know. And so what seeing him keep going, then that shit that shit make me want to keep going. You know what I'm saying? This spot that I'm about to show you though, it's pretty much man where uh, a lot of us guys started out. A lot of them stories come from the uh, we just call it the Sal because it's at the Salvation Army. But so this the building, this the building that we used to use. Right inside here was is the lab, and so it'll be. Uh, Man, a bunch of kids, man. My partner, uh, Gil Gates, he the one that showed me this. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's only two blocks from the school. So we had come in here. You might be able to see in. But that first door there to the left, you know what I'm saying? That's where we used to, to make it happen at. But, uh, you know, the same way that Swiggo said I helped him, you know, it was guys that helped me, man. My cousin Al Hicks, rest in peace, probably the dopest MC up out of Portland that never uh, got out, you know, because he passed at a young age. Just trying to put something together, you know what I'm saying, and and keep that energy going, you know. And nowadays, it's, some of the guys is, is is still working on their music. Some of the guys is doing other stuff, you know what I'm saying. But um, I got two scholarships from up in here, man. So you know, and then they even took me and uh, my partner Nap Nicholson, man. At 17, they took us out to Boston. And then we got to meet all of the um, different different uh, computer clubhouses through Intel, not just in America, but around the world. Shit, we was only like 17, you know, that was all four. So, wow. but it was it was big because, I don't know, I had traveled, but uh, it was just tight being around other kids that was on the same thing that I was on. And it kind of prepped me because I didn't know, you know, but uh, a year or two later, you know, I'd be in Atlanta and everybody out there is, is uh, you know what I'm saying, pretty much doing some type of shit. So, you know. I, I kind of consider you a little bit of a historian at this point um, yeah. when it comes to the Portland hip hop game. Yeah, um, I, I I did do a lot of homework oh, on you. My bad. I'm I spent I spent a lot of time doing some homework on you. Um, you know, someone that I've gotten to know kind of personally the last couple of, uh, last couple of months here really hard is uh, is uh, Bosky Rock. Bosky Rock. My homie Bo. Do? Or or as what, was it Debo? Yeah, Debo. Yep. That's yeah. my that's my first cousin. Um. What do we got to do to get some more Doty Brothers out of y'all? Because I tell you what, the Doty Brothers is where it's at. Man, we actually uh, we actually got some in the work. So uh, we actually we we working on it right now. To make a long story short, man, <laughs> uh, you know Debo, man, that's like I said, that's my big cousin. That's my on my dad's side. That's my oldest first cousin. You know what I'm saying? He was born out here, but was raised up in Oklahoma. But uh, you know, me and him, our bond on that on that music is and our understanding on it. Yeah. It's just something different, man. You know, we'll just be rolling in the car, freestyling and just make it, doing our own thing, you know what I'm saying? Having our own vibe, you know. Sometimes me and Cuddy Bump heads, but for the most part, you already know if you see Ted Lock and Debo coming, man, you know, it's finna you finna laugh and we finna jam. But uh we we actually working on it, man. Me and me and Debo, man, we've been spending a lot of time, um, you know, we both got labs at the house, and then we've been spending a lot of time. We got a couple studios that we go to out of town. It's because, uh, you know, he got kids, I got kids, and all the things that we deal with here. So we'll get on the plane, go meet out of town, go to the studio, and knock out like 10 or 15 the, la the that, last uh, time. Oh, go that, ahead. that almost leads me into my next question then. I saw the, did you do some work with Braze or Braze? My boy Braze from yeah, San Diego? Yeah, yeah. So to make uh He's on the he's on the uh, uh the song with Boski that I just right. filmed the video for, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we did those we did those songs in uh Las Vegas. So the story behind Braze <coughs> We me and Braze well Braze is my partner too, but me and Braze, we got a comment, homie. My partner D Fresh, uh, you know, we went to school together out in Atlanta and he he has uh the Medi Gang apparel now. That y'all might have seen me slanging at a different hemp fest and stuff. But um, 
you know, Br Braves came through with Doug and we got cool over the years like that, D Fresh. And uh, the last time, maybe two or three times ago, earlier this year, me and Debo was out there recording. And uh, man, we was freestyling on the roof of the Lux store, you know what I'm saying? Old school G shit, you know what I'm saying? And um, man, I hadn't even heard Braves rap yet. This is the same day that they ended up doing this is the same day that they ended up doing the uh, the, song, the song, but we did about we did about 10, 15 songs though that day. You know what I'm saying? But he was rapping and was like, "Yeah, man, uh, you know, let let me get up in there." But uh, yep, I got some music. I got some music with Braves too. Braves and D Fresh, they gonna be up on the um, on the Doty Brothers album for sure. I like Braves a lot. I, did, I didn't really heard of him until that day, uh, until I started editing the video, and I was like, man, this fool is fresh well, as hell. Well, this yeah. is the thing, man. Um, <laughs> you know, T Ted brought him out of retirement, because on that day, we was having a conversation, and he actually he does comedy as well. And uh, he says, yeah, man, I ain't did no no music in a minute. <laughs> and I was telling him, I said, nah, that's dope. And then once we laid the song, I said, well, you only is relevant as your last action so you just lay something down today so you back relevant yeah <clears throat> and so now every time we go out there he come and meet up with us <clears throat> and he drops something but braids is a dope cat to work with my boy d fresh a dope cat to work with too you know what i'm saying it's my dago partners man for good dudes take me back to probably your favorite portland hip-hop moment take, take me back to the like what was the day that just made ted Lowe feel like he was on top of the world or maybe one of your co-parts that were on top of the world Ooh -wee. something that made you feel nice though Man, I had a I had a lot of moments. Uh, so I'm gonna go back, man. So uh, when I was a kid, right? You know what I'm saying? Growing up uh, in Northeast, right around here, my daddy, all he used to do was uh, pretty much listen to music and. You know what I'm saying? Rap and all of that. I think they about to ask us to move. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, just doing an interview. Yep. Yep, Thanks, yep. Appreciate I'm a it. member of the community. I used to volunteer in there every uh, Christmas passing out uh, food boxes. Yep. I got okay? Yep, Wednesdays you good. Wednesdays and Fridays. Good. Wednesdays and Fridays, 9 to 1 here at the Salvation Army. I got more. I got more than one uh, moment, but you know I'm, I'm gonna take it back. When I was growing up in the '90s, man, you know what I'm saying, 12th in Alberta. You know, uh, my daddy. Y'all know my daddy. You know what I'm saying. He always he worked at Jack's. It was a hood spot. The chicken spot, yeah. The chicken spot, man. You yeah. know that's that's why Ted be cooking that chicken, man. You know <laughs> what I'm saying. But uh, you know we'll be there and you'll see all of the posters. You know what I'm saying. You see all the posters of all the uh, guys in the um, in the uh, in the parking lot, you know. And he listened to a lot of rap, and he knew a lot of uh, a lot of guys. And then my sister, she was rapping back then. So I remember when I was five, I only ever had one verse ever ghost wrote for me, and uh, and it was from Rose City Mischief. You know what I'm saying? When I was five years old. She wrote me a rap, and uh, and then I didn't want to say, I was scared to say it because it said the N-word. Ironically, I don't even use that word today, but you know what I'm saying? Only rap ever ghost wrote. And as I was growing up, though, you know, some of the artists would be like people that she put me on. This was another spot right here. This used to be called uh, Ethos. You know what I'm saying? That was a music spot for kids, too. It's something else now. Just seeing the different artists, in the neighborhood, man, you know, the uh, the can't be caught, the Gotham's, uh, you know what I'm saying? Cool Nuts, Maniac, seeing all them guys coming up and just hearing them like putting down quality music. And then, you know, they from the, the same neighborhood, man, that uh, that I grew up in and I'm, I'm seeing these guys, you know, and I'm a, I'm a kid, I'm a baby. You know, and they, they they adults to me, but I'm seeing them and I'm looking up to them. But, uh, you know, I remember, uh, you know, I remember, man, when I got old enough to really get down, uh, you know, and, and then bumping into cats, man, and then being able to get on the shows, you know, I had ended up uh, 
you know, I know uh, Smurf real well. Uh, no, Smurf. no nuts, no cool nuts, pretty decently. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, when them guys started, I ain't did a whole lot of shows with them, but you know, the couple that they put me on and. That, that shit just always made me feel good doing shit yeah. like that. You know, I think I, I did a, uh, I did a pole hop. Oh, you, on a, you on a pole hop event? You, uh, yep, oh, I yeah, I did pole hop 12, man. What uh, year was that one? That was when I first moved back. So that was like, I forget if it was December of 2010 or January of 2011, but it was like right, it was like right when I moved back, you know what I'm saying? So. You know that that Are was, you on the album too? Are you on the Pole Hop album? Nope, nope, nope. I'm not on the album. This was this was like later, like one of the later ones, man. Right. Like I didn't make a lot of music with a lot of the guys, man. Most of my stuff is uh just me, man. But uh, you know, that's something that hopefully I could change this year. But like just doing different shows and uh, you know, hearing my song on the radio or my cousin calling me from the pen, man. Oh, Cuddy, man, I, I just heard your shit, man. I'm I'm down here at, at OSP or at Snake. Man, and they, they playing your shit, you know what I'm saying? That's gotta make you feel good. You know, when uh when I lived in Atlanta, I actually had my own radio show out there, and I banged my shit like that. But it's like, I can't name one single moment that was like my, my favorite moment, but it's like, man, I'm, I'm a fan of music, so. It's a bunch of artists that I grew up listening to, man. Like them guys that I just named. Can't forget, man. Uh, grew up listening to, uh, man, my guy Tate Diesel, man. Another cat from around the way that was hard, man. Um, I think one thing about me, people liked, like right here, we right here on Killingsworth, uh, in front of, um, used to be Vinny's. Got KC's Market up over there. You know, this this where I we used to hang out. Where Ted used to hang out at a lot. You know what I'm saying? And um, one thing about me, man, they know I like to call out. I, I felt like a lot of cats, they never really talked about the streets we lived on and that we hung out on. I, Ted always talking about the streets we on. Killingsworth, Albina, Alberta. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, Northeast, man. You want something to drink? Uh, I'm, I'm straight. I don't need nothing. But, uh, I think it's just with me, man. My, I guess, I'd like to say, I don't got no favorite moment, but it's just the whole, like, all right, then. growing up and, and becoming that artist. Cause I feel like right now, I got I, my skill level right now is like, I can spit a verse exactly how I want <coughs> and come across exactly how I want. You know what I'm saying? I was just listening on before I got here the, the 10 Toes, which is like, <laughs> Is that a couple years ago? It seems like mm -hmm. the last is that the last release we got out of you so far. Is the no, ten no, toes, but it's no. I did um, so ten toes down. That can, that was actually on my partner SK's album. That's pretty tight too. The, yeah. Is that he raps uh, second on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's pretty dope, dude. That's yeah, so too. that so uh, I just wanted to put out like a little video, just to show. But um, since then, I came with a. I had like a little. I guess you call it an unofficial mixtape. I was kind of pushing out my shows. Uh, but then I came with um, my partner, Prescott. He called me up to the studio and wanted to make a, a seven track EP. I ended up being on six of the songs. So it's pretty much mine too. So Northeast Legends, that came out in um, February of 2020. Um, on there, we redid uh, Cool Nuts, What I'm About. Uh, they was digging that. We redid uh, Can't Be Caught, My City. Ooh. And then we made some of our own. Uh, it's a couple videos out from it, you know. That one was, uh, that was a pretty heavy, heavy uh, EP, man. A lot of cats still coming up to me talking about that. And then uh, in December, in December of 2020, I put out uh, Northeast Flow, which is just my solo seven track EP. And Northeast Flow is just kind of like me telling the story of uh, kind of growing up out here and coming from the streets and going to school and coming back, being a dad, but still having to deal with who I was because who I was is still who I am. But you know, we just got different things in our vision now. 
you know yeah. what I'm saying, and different responses. I noticed that from looking at your Facebook page, you seem to be a very cherished, valued family man. Yeah, like um, a motherfucker. You got your children involved in some of your video projects. Mm -hmm. The Halloween one that you and Boski did with the kids was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great example of how someone can be a, a gentle giant, if that makes any sense. Oh, it makes plenty of sense. That Halloween project, I actually didn't have no kids yet. It was all nieces and nephews. Well, there you go. You put it to work. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I do, if you listen to, uh, oh, that's dope. Yeah. If you listen to Northeast Flow, you'll hear, uh, you'll see that I got my sons involved on that one because it's me telling the story of, you know, just being out here. Uh, I got a track called uh, "Never For or Easy To Forget, and that's about my uh, my late father. And then I got my oldest son, he's on there, and I pretty much got him real conversations that we really had. Dad, why I can't meet your dad? Uh, why are we oh, always yeah. going to the graveyard? Uh, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. And I'm like, nah, we're gonna put this on here because it's real conversations me and my son really have. And uh, you know, it came out real powerful. At, at this time, though, I'm working on um, I'm working on something new. Yeah, what you got in the works? What, what can we what can man, we expect the, the, out of you? So man? the man, next what can we one, let's go about the little sign the, right here. Yeah, the <laughs> next one, man. The, the verses is um, you know, the verses is gonna be dope. But I'm doing some. I feel like I want to do something totally different with this one, man. And for a couple different reasons, the next one gonna be called the Handsome Virgo, cause I'm Ooh. handsome and I'm a motherfucking Virgo from the Northeast side. Ooh, look at that. But uh, this one is gonna be like. I, f I feel like I never, you know, my lady and a couple of my homegirls are like, man, tell you don't never make nothing for us. I mean, you could rap, but you know what I'm saying? You don't make nothing for us. So That's this a, one I'm making pretty much all songs is like towards the ladies. Uh, I'm still rapping hard than a motherfucker, but it's like I wanted to show uh, a different side of Ted, you know, like when, when Batman get to be Bruce Wayne, you know what I'm saying? So what man, again? What is it? What is I mean, it done for I, you? I'm a, I'm gonna put it like this, man. I I look at myself like I mean I could say uh, come up with something, try to make it sound deep, but you know I feel like I am you know that spirit of Portland hip hop. I am that embodiment of Portland hip hop because you know if, if you come outside you are gonna see me. I'm I'm really I'm still out here, um, and it, it's uh. Like I said, one thing about me from day one, if you listen to all my shit, if you go back and read my book, you know, I've been talking that Portland shit the whole time, that Northeast shit the whole time. You know, and some cats are starting to do it now, you know what I'm saying, but I, I've been on that shit though the whole time. I tell you, that's why I'm here, man. That's yeah. That's why I'm here. Right. So it, so <laughs> that's it's real, that's real ass talk right, right so there. It, so it's like, you know, I, I, I feel like I am that. And like I said, you is really going to see me out here. You know, I, I I went to Jeff, I went to King, I went to Tubman, you know. I hustled on Albina, hey, man. My daddy worked at Jack's. I went to King, man. Were you one of the tumblers? Never. Man. <laughs> I couldn't flip for shit, man. Man, they used to come to our school as a kid, and I used to be like, how the hell do you get on the tumbling team? And King was like the only place I had it. Yeah, they did have a tumbling team. I, <laughs> yeah. I tried out every year, but, um, you know, shout out to Mr. Mantia, man, the gym teacher. I never made the cut, you know. <laughs> Ted, Ted only got one talent, man. I, I could rap. And I could write, you know what I'm saying? But um, I love Portland hip hop though. It's a lot of artists that uh, that I listen to. When I'm out of town, man, I'm jamming y'all shit. I'm showing other people y'all shit. Uh, you know, it's it's just the, the whole uh, the whole spirit, you know? I Teddy, wish that- your efforts have created some people. So yeah. don't, 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 don't let it go in vain, my friend. You've, yeah. you've created some people with your efforts. What, what I was gonna say though, I, I wish, and I know I ain't the first one to say this, I ain't gonna be the last. I wish that we had more unity, you know, because the city, it ain't just Portland, it's a lot of places like that. It's real, it's uh it's real cliquish, you know what I'm saying? You know, I wish that we had a little more unity because we, we could be a whole lot uh further, you know what I'm saying, instead of instead of uh being intimidated, you know, like man, you should be excited. This motherfucker tight, you tight, man. Let's let's link up, man. Let's let's make something dope, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, you know, stop, 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 stop hating on the next man. Let's let's just put this shit out. You know, we too the, the city too small for rap beefs. You know what I'm saying? If you got some beef, man, leave that shit off, off wax. Handle that shit in person, whatever. But you know what I'm saying, man. If you out here trying to make this music, 
You know what I'm saying? Just make the music, man. Let's put it out, man. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they waiting on it, you know? I've been, I been to Atlanta. I've been to L.A. I've been to Houston, man. You know, they, they fuck with this Portland shit, but it just ain't enough of us, um, you know what I'm saying, together. You know what I'm saying? Pushing it like the other cities is, is really coming together. You know what I'm saying? So. Well said. Well said. Um, Teddy, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank yeah. you so much, my friend. Uh, right. It's been an honor to have you here today. Um, before we take off, is there, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to or special blessings or maybe Man. a message to the city even? Uh, so, I mean, I, I got a lot of folks I, I could shout out, but I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a actually flip the script. So, um, I also want to talk about, uh, I know we're wrapping it up, but I want to talk okay. about myself as an author too. Well, let's talk about your book, your book, correct? Right. right. So, um, pretty much, man, uh. 20, 2009, 2010, you know, I had wrote a script. Um, my script was on some, uh, I'm in a horror, you know what I'm saying? I want to write a horror story that took place in Portland. Not necessarily a true story. I want to write like a crazy horror story that took place in Portland and not sugarcoat kind of like how we do out here and what goes on out here. Um, and what uh what ended up happening, you know, I got my script, but I ain't been able to film it the way I like. So I decided to make it a novel, man, because I, I like novels. So pretty much pushed that. Uh December 2018 is when I published. And then um all of 2019. That did real good in the city, man. Um a lot of cats wasn't expecting that, you know what I'm saying? Uh like, and it's it was a book. And it wasn't a book about, oh, this is my, this is my uh, look at me story. Like, nah, it's, it's just a novel. But I got a, I got another one coming, though. Uh, I got part two coming to that one. And then I got another book called Burnt Bridges. Uh, you know, these is all fiction, man. You know, I, I ain't talking about no, uh, no self-help or nothing like that. But I'm also coming with a cookbook. And uh, look out for my cooking channel cooking with cutting ted if you've been following me on youtube right. on snap and on facebook man you know i'm a fool up in that kitchen so you know what i'm saying just know i'm coming with the music but you know when i like i said when i say i i'm embodying the whole shit man it's, it's ted all around man you know we cooking we rapping we writing and we raising them motherfucking babies man straight like that you know what i'm saying that's great yeah thanks again ted low you've been awesome man i really appreciate it again right thanks on again right on time uh, yeah, this is great. Right on, right so, on. Cheers, friend. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, man, that was dope. All right, tight.